with comedies, like a lot of times, you, you, you hope the audience will like it. And, you yeah. know, you know that the movie plays for an audience, but critics, you never know. Yeah, you know they can go. Everybody was laughing, but it, I hated it. Yeah. Um, but uh, this one's been really well reviewed in the states, at least so far, and I think I think over here it's going to start to be so. Yeah, when you do you read your reviews when you kind of go to, is it if you're on Rotten Tomatoes or something? Is yeah. it like just go over to Squish and then just go to the tomato like? Because I always wonder where the directors do that because it must be like you know very nerve wracking looking through. Them. It's hard. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it varies from project to project. Yeah. I, you know, if I this one I read a lot because um, you know I was a producer on this one. I was yeah. really involved in all aspects. So even like for the TV advertisements and stuff, I would go through all the reviews and help help the studio pull certain quotes, mm. you know, or keep suggesting ideas. So I, I, I read a lot on this one. And why this, um, why the story of two men who fall in a platonic love? Where did this come from? You know, I, to me, it's, it's something that's always like in the culture, but yeah. we, we haven't really put a magnifying glass in it, which is like, Guys, you know, and the difficulty that you have making friends as as an adult. Um, so I I like movies that are about everyday things, but to kind of like put a comic spin yeah. on it. You know, that's why it just seemed like the right time for it. You just seemed like comedy. Now there's a lot of stuff happening. This is a show called Bromance and stuff seems to be coming yeah. off the back of it. Yeah, that that word's gonna be in the dictionary soon enough, isn't it? Bromance. It is. <laughs> it is. It's not my favorite term, but you know, yeah. I get it. Everybody yeah. looks for a shortcut. Uh, to describe something, and, and this is yeah, it's you said it. it's a platon it's a story about two guys who are just friends, you know, mm -hmm. beginning and the awkwardness kind of, that kind of comes. With a that. lot of awkwardness, yeah. I, I like to explore awkwardness in movies. A lot of my movies have have kind of delved into that. So, and this felt like the perfect kind of playing ground for that. And, and talking to, to Paul and Jason, they seem to be you know that the root the, for them there really needs to be a trust there with the director because because they're riffing so much and causes a lot of yeah. improv and see Brooke and Benson and stuff like that in the past. They really need to trust you, yes. you know, to be able to, to pick the right material. So does that, that obviously just comes down to your sense of humor. How can you tell from right now, and when cutting right, people will like this. This will be funny. This, you know, you go on based yeah. on your gut. You know, you go with experience and your gut, and what what makes me laugh and my editor and and you know our small sort of circle of collaborators, and and then we we test screen. Excuse me. Then we test screen the movie. Yeah. So, we throw it up in front of five hundred people. And that's the truest way to see. You know, I could think something's brilliant, and and you screen it, and nobody's laughing, and then we have a problem. That must be worse than looking at Rotten Tomatoes if you're sitting at the back oh, just God. waiting for those laughs. Yeah, that that, be... that's bad. But on the other hand, when they are laughing, or yeah. the first time you show the movie and you get your first laugh, and you just go, oh, thank God. You know, they they seem to be enjoying it. Do you see? Do you think? Do you think the testing process is useful? Obviously, it's. Very a necessary evil as such. I don't see it as an evil. Yeah. I mean, I think some some directors hate it, but most comedy directors you'll talk to, I think, go, uh, you have to do yeah. it because unlike a drama, you know, a comedy, you can you, when you're trying to make people laugh and they're not laughing, then you can't pretend that it's working. Yeah. You know, maybe working in a different way, but but not in the way that that you intended it to. But you've got a you've got a fantastic supporting cast here as well, like not just Paul and Jason, who are obviously two very, very funny guys, but John Favreau, who I'm yeah. a huge fan of best first line ever in a movie by the way, with Jamie that time. Right. How did how did you get John to come in and do I know he does a lot of these kind of small cameos. Did you just go to him with the park and be like after Iron Man, I'm like, can you fit this in? Yeah, you know, I've known John for a bunch of years mm. and um, I just called him up and said Listen, you know, you, uh, it's hard to tell a guy you wrote a part for him and then he reads the part and goes, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> but, you know, I was like, look, you'll you'll kill in this movie. You don't have to, it's, it's a short process. And he was excited about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he liked also that after Iron Man, there was no pressure on him. He just showed up. You could up. look at you running around the place going exactly. nuts. Exactly, exactly. But John Favreau and guys like John Favreau and Vince Vaughn, you know, in the early days, in the, in the mid to kind of the late 90s. They yeah. were kind of first guys to really embrace the improv on, on, on a large scale. Yeah. Would you would you agree with that or do you think, you know, yeah, I they, mean, Apatow and stuff obviously earlier, but... Sure. Yeah, Yeah. I think, you know, John and Vince and Swingers and and the subsequent stuff that they did, they, they set a tone for kind of a buddy movie and, yeah. and Judd's done a lot of that. And, you know, the, even Ben Stiller and some of the projects we've done together, yeah. there, there's been a, you know, a through line of kind of scripted and improvised, you know, sort of a combo. I think even if you go back to like Bill Murray movies from the 70s and 80s, he did a lot of that yeah. too, so. It's just on that scale where you can, it's, it's down to the director, you know, you got the script, you can kind of, the script to one side and you know, you have your template there and then it's the director in the editing room again. Exactly, yeah, yeah you, you cast the right actors and stay out of their way and then, you know, and then in the editing room you just sort of like find out, find the best material. And it's not just not just John and Jamie as well, you've got like J.K. Simmons who I think is an incredibly underrated actor. Oh, he's... He just kind of pops in and cracks up. 
He is amazing. Yeah, I loved him. You know, I used to love him on that TV show Oz. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you get it over yeah, we here. We did, we did, yeah. But um, he was intense, you know, and then he played the dad in Juno, which I loved. And uh, yeah, he's just such a cool guy and just comes in and does it. And he can improvise really well, too. You know, he hasn't been in that many comedies, but... Yeah. He's really good. Even in even in the, the latest Coen Brothers one, it was just he, when it, he was my favorite part of that. Yeah, you make that take such a small time to make such a such a big impact. You exactly. Know? But there's a lot of stars as well. There's a lot of guys. You, were you stretching yourself thin on set? Like, or <laughs> is it easier when when guys are just good at comedy? Just to it's go. It's easier. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I knew a lot of these people. They were friends of mine. Some for many years, and some new people too. But. Um, it's great, you know, where, when you can be on a set and everywhere you turn is some really funny person. And, you know, I like to shoot a lot of film and just let them go off or suggest things. And then, you know, you bring the editing room, to the editing room just mm -hmm. tons of material. And when you have really funny people in the supporting parts, it just can make every moment a little bit better. Does it take that little bit of pressure off you as well? And you're like, these guys can do it too, so, you know... I know they're going to give me good stuff to mess yeah. around with. Yeah, well, it's more, I really like when you show up on set and you have a, a script, and I work really hard on the script, but you know you can try to elevate it from there. And mm. so when you when you have really funny actors, you know, a lot of exciting things can mm. come up just in the moment. And you've written some a couple of classics, I have to be said, some comedy, like you got Meet, Meet the Parents, you got Zoolander, oh. one of the most rewatchable movies of all time. Oh, thank you. How, how different is the process from just writing and handing the script over? Well, not, not so much the process, but how different is it, you know, handing your baby over and yeah. then somebody else do it as you enjoy directing, obviously a lot more have been able to. You know, I've been lucky. The, the movies that I've written or co-written, it's I, I've never just turned the script over. I've always been involved mm -hmm. all the way through and been on the set a lot and in the editing room. So, you know... It was, I, I worked with great directors on those movies. So that, it was just like, I never felt like, ah, mm -hmm. what are you doing to, to my baby? But, I, you know, the most gratifying thing for me is, is writing and directing. I mean, that, because then you can really see it all the way through. And you're producing it as well, so you're responsible for all aspects of, of the production, too. Yeah, yeah. And you get a say in all aspects of the production. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I like that, this combination, you know, I'm exhausted now, but, uh, but I like doing the... Uh, <laughs> Doing all three, all three jobs for sure. Okay, and was it was it always Lou Ferrigno in the script? Because it just seems like yeah. such a random thing. Was it for that line? You don't want to make him angry. It's, it's <laughs> funny. It's people definitely ask me. They're like, "Who did you? You know, did you write it for Mr. T or yeah. somebody else?" It was always Ferrigno. Yeah, uh, I just had the idea and uh, I thought it'd be funny, and then. Yeah, I mean, it was for, you know, once I had the idea of Lou Ferrigno, then it's like, maybe I'll have Jason's character attack him and, <laughs> and Rashida's character be like, why, why would you get in a fight with the Hulk? Um, you know, because so it, just, it just seems that random. Like, it's yeah. random, but in L.A., you can run into a guy like Lou Ferrigno that, you know, get picking up his dry cleaning or something like that. Yeah. So I was trying to capture sort of that idea. Yeah, okay. And you've got, a, you've got a couple of things in the pipeline at the moment, but the, the big one you've got in the pipeline, which is a lot of press, but it was, is Little Fockers. Yes. Little Fockers. Well, what else have you got going on? Uh, I have that, and then um, there's a movie I wrote called The Troubleshooter, which is like a comic thriller, uh, almost like a Hitchcockian sort of yeah. comedy mystery that I'll hopefully make in the next couple of years. And then, uh, and then an original script, uh, kind of in, in the same sort of vein as I Love You, Man, that we might make next spring. And will you ever, would you think you can see yourself venturing out from comedy a little bit and going a little bit more dramatic? Joe, I know Joe Dapatow has gone a little bit with, with funny people now, which is supposed to be skewing more dramatic. More right. So. You know, I don't know. I mean, I could definitely see venturing that, that direction. But everything I do, even if I want it to be a drama, it sort of turns into a comedy. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll, I'll try to stay in that world for a little while. Okay. And finally, can you give us any, anything at all on Little Fuckers, what's happening? What, you know, uh, it's obviously the kids. It's yeah, that, yeah. It's, it's Ben Stiller and, and Terry Polo have, have kids. Uh, they have twins. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I can't tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got it for a second. Yeah, or, yeah. No uh, my inner se I heard uh, the studio going, Hamburg, don't say no, anything. Don't tell that yeah. guy. No. Exactly. Okay, John, we really appreciate your time. My so pleasure. Thank you very much.